okay, I'm going to quickly unzip the bag. Just before I open the lid, I'm going to let you know it's quite a solid firm construction. Okay, it's a really hard wearing cordia kind of nylon outer, a really nice cross weave. There's a very subtle, and I'll show you that later, but there's a very subtle ARTX logo on the uh, on the front lid. So I'm just going to open the box, uh, the box, and uh, the special package travel bag. And as you can see, I've already got this filled with my AR Drone 2. It can fit the original AR Drone 1 as well as the AR Drone 2. Obviously, only with the outdoor hull. There's absolutely no way you can get the indoor hull within the box and the bag at all. So, uh, no luck there. Okay, um, there are four battery compartments. I've only got three in use uh, there at the moment, and the fifth one, of course, in the drone uh, as you take it with you. There are also some nice uh, compartments here, which I'm going to just show you as well and explain the kind of things that I typically carry with me. So I've got some spares and repairs, some cogs and some shafts. I've got spare propellers, four of those in there. I've got my main tool kit from AR Drone, which is the screwdriver and the circlip remover. I've got some spare elastic bands. Um, I use elastic bands to additionally hold the uh, foam outdoor hull to the air drone itself. I've got back here a black microphone uh, holder sleeve, it actually goes onto a microphone normally and I have that because underneath here I've got both a uh, USB stick that I would put inside the unit to record videos as well as um, a USB uh, voice recorder, it's, it's an independent device that I typically would uh, fold up and wrap within the microphone sleeve, elastic bands around, the, around it, unit on top, one of my other videos shows that much better than I've just explained. Okay, I've also got some tissues holding, of all things, an old grotty toothbrush, and I'll explain why in a minute, and another bunch of tissues holding um, an old nail brush. He says lots of tissue, and an old, again, nylon bristled nail brush, and I'll explain why again in a minute. So let me just get the actual uh, drone out, and you can have a quick look at how this fits, because obviously I've got a black on black here. So the blades have to be aligned perfectly um, along the length of the unit and then it just literally drops in he says knocking the propeller if you don't have the hull on there's a little bit of play so the unit does move around a little bit so you really want to make sure that you've got your outdoor hull on in place to hold the uh, AR drone in place and it does a good job doing that each battery is held down by good velcro straps and it's a very neat very recessed hole for each one I'm going to just put something white in just so you can see what I mean by this so it's actually quite deep so I've just got a little white bit of cardboard there the right kind of size and as you can see if I just drop that down you're all familiar with the Parrot AR drone battery by now so if I drop that down you can see it goes down a good centimetre and a half so I put it in width ways it's almost flush now so I'm going to just again use the white card here the back and the front so you can see what I'm doing now there's actually enough room underneath the battery that if you want to tuck the wire and cables underneath you can do so you don't want the wires loose I think that's particularly more useful for people that have got the AR drone one batteries where you've got a little bit more wiring and cables going on but as you can see with my other batteries that I've got in the case I just let the, uh, the wire and the connector lie on top and keep them free there's enough play and enough give within the spongy foaminess of the inside um, it's quite solid but there is foam underneath as well I'm going to just peel back this cover here so you can see there's actually foam underneath this quite solid specially molded case and all in all quite well designed 